Okay, everybody, uh, we're gonna try this this video one more time. I, I just made this video and the lighting in here was so bad you couldn't see much. And so I'm gonna give it one more try. So you're welcome uh, for giving this one more shot. We just came up with some new identities. We found the tangent equals sine over cosine. We found the cotangent is cosine over sine. Oh, we used the Pythagorean theorem to find sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. And then we use some pretty easy algebra to find two stepchildren or stepsisters or whatever you might want to say of that last one. So we have all kinds of identities in our arsenal, and we're going to now use those identities to do some pretty easy stuff. I'm going to put my board up on the screen here. Let's see. Let's get rid of this. Let's go back to where we should have been. Let's get rid of all of this writing on there. Let's get rid of it. Okay, so on the screen right now, I hope you can see that. There's a bunch of identities, right? I did not write down Sokatoa. I did not write down Koshikau, but I wrote down the rest that we picked up today. So one thing we're going to do that's a very simple thing is if I give you one trig value, like 10, and I say find another trig value, you want to be able to do that. And so in problem number one, in example one, I've given you tangent and I've told you what quadrant we're in. That's important. We're in quadrant two. And so let's let's see what we would do here. Ideally, wouldn't it be lovely if secant and tangent were both in the same identity? Delightful. So we're going to use that identity, of course. Tangent squared plus one equals secant squared. Okay, plug in what you know. Tangent is negative two. Square it. Four plus one, anybody? And then, of course, we're almost home. Take the square root of both sides. Uh, square root of five, that's got to be a plus or minus, right? Two answers. Except we're in quadrant two. So think in quadrant two, maybe you're not comfortable with secant, but you're definitely comfortable with the reciprocal of secant, which is cosine. So in quadrant two, cosine, all students say cosine is negative, so it's reciprocal. Is also negative. If a number is negative and you flip it over, it's still negative. So there we have a very easy starter example. If we know tangent is negative two and we're in quadrant two, then secant is negative root five. Delightful. Check. All right. One more like that. Um, this time you're given cosine. Find tangent. Hmm. And we're in quadrant one. Um, I love to work with sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. That's it's just one of my go-tos. It's just so easy to work with a lot of times. So here's here's what I'm gonna do. There's more than one way to do this one. Uh, but I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna use this and plug in what I know. Cosine is four fifths. So cosine squared is sixteen twenty fifths. Uh, let's go ahead and subtract 16 25ths from both sides. Use your calculators if you can't do this in your heads. But if you can't do this in your heads, why not? Feel like 25 25ths minus 16 25ths is that. Take the square root. Square root of 9 25ths. Oh, boy. That's three fifths plus or minus. But we're in quadrant one, right? And everything in quadrant one is positive. So we have sine, but that wasn't the darn question. The question was tangent. Well, the first thing we learned today was tangent is sine divided by cosine. I'm running out of space, so I'm gonna write small. Sine is three-fifths, cosine is four-fifths, I'm 
I'm not going to show the copy change and flip. If you can't figure this one out in your noggins, why not? It is three-fourths. So we've solved for tangent knowing cosine. So those first two examples are similar to each other. Give you one trig value, find another one. Not too hard. The other three examples in the notes are going to be take something yucky looking and simplify it. If I give you a fraction like eight twelfths, y'all are pretty good at making that two thirds, right? It's a similar concept kind of. We're going to take stuff that's disgusting looking and try to make it look simpler. Okay, so the first one, you will notice cosecant squared minus cotangent squared over cosine. Yikes. Cosecant squared and cotangent squared. Huh, they both show up in that identity. It appears that anywhere you have cosecant squared, you may write this. So I'm going to use that. I have a cosecant squared right there. In place of cosecant squared, I substituted what it's equal for. Don't skip any steps here. Substitute what it's equal to. What it's equal to. Okay, so that's all I did in this first step. I substituted for cosecant squared. That thing right there. Now you can clean it up. Cotangent squared minus cotangent squared is, anybody? Zero plus one. Hey, that looks better, but not good enough. Let's go, let's go farther. Uh, what's the reciprocal of cosine? One over cosine is secant. So what we have done is we've taken the disgusting fraction in the problem and simplified it all the way down to secant. So in other words, that fraction is just a stupid way of writing secant. Don't write secant like that, that's kind of dumb. Okay, that's uh, that's example three. Questions, questions, any? No, I didn't think so. All right, four. Um, you'll get good at these eventually. One thing you almost, almost never would do when you're presented with a problem like number four is distribute. Some people see this problem and they're like, oh, I want to write this as sine plus sine cotangent squared. I want to distribute. It just makes it uglier. We're trying to make things look simpler. So look at one plus cotangent squared and say to yourself, do I know anything about one plus cotangent squared? I already have it circled. Delightful. Or ellipsed. One plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. Yes, direct substitution. Now, a strategy that gets used over and over and over and over again is take all the things not written as sines and cosines and change it to sines and cosines. So for instance, cosecant squared, you know, is the reciprocal of sine squared. So write it that way. And then I'm going to show my work here. This is sine over sine squared. Hey, we're in dogfight territory. Uh, one and two. Who wins? The bottom by one. And to finish, what is the reciprocal of sine? It is cosine. So in other words, this was just a dumb, longer way of writing. Okay, so this is the process. Number five, I should let you do by yourselves, but you're not here, so I'm going to do it with you, or for you, whatever. Number five has a ginormous multiplication symbol. I don't know if you've noticed that. It means times. I couldn't find a smaller one. We're going to use the strategy of writing things using sines and cosines. So we learned at the start of the day that tangent is sine over cosine. So cotangent is cosine over sine. We have two of them. 
Okay, so that's the first step. Uh, secant squared. Big time sign. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Two of them. Okay, so very simple what's going to happen next. And just to finish, what is the reciprocal of sine? You're saying it with me right now. It's cosecant. Two of them. And so there we have it. We have simplified this problem to cosecant squared. Okay, so these two videos, the goal was to uh, learn some new identities and then use them to do some very straightforward uh, things. Uh, I hope you followed along. I hope the lighting was better. I've now done this video twice. I will not do it a third time. Uh, I hope the lighting was better. It's just so hard. It's hard to figure out exactly what you're seeing versus what I can see. Uh, I hope you're having a great spring break. Um, doing good stuff, being nice to your family, hanging out, enjoying your time. I do miss you, though. I don't like it that you're not in here. Nobody's in here, not a single person. I got a lot of stuff in here, but no people. So uh, these two videos ought to be enough for you to do some, some problems that'll be on Google Classroom. So take a look at Classroom. That'll get you through Monday and Tuesday. And then we'll be back together. I'll get on, on here and make some more magic happen. Magic. Uh, in a couple days. All right. So trig identities. Uh, learn them. Love them. Know them. All that kind of good stuff. Bye-bye.